Hi, I'm Ms. Pozak and I'm teaching reading. This week we are talking about text-to-text -text connections. That's whenever you read a book and think, that reminds me of this other book. You guys already know the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, where Goldilocks goes into her house and tries a whole bunch of stuff and breaks some things as well. Today we are going to read this book, Goldie Rocks in the Three Bears, written by Corey Rosen Schwartz and Beth Colton and illustrated by Nath Rag. While I'm reading this book, I want you to think, what are some things that are the same as the original story and what are some things that are different from the original story? Let's get started. Once upon a rock and roll time, three bears band jammed with ease. The papa bear drummed, the mama bear strummed, and baby bear tickled the keys. But the band didn't have many fans yet, and papa bear figured out why. Though we all love to croon and can carry a tune, we can't hit the notes way up high. So. They set out to find a soprano. Soon after, they left a girl knocked. Is that porridge I smell? Gee, that would be swell. She checked in and the house was unlocked. A studio? Great balls of fire. Amazed, Goldie ran through the door. She forgot about food and was now in the mood to hurry on in and explore. The mama bear's mic hit her elbow, and Pops reached to the top of her head. But Baby's was hiked just to where she liked. I'll give it a whirl, Goldie said. She grabbed and started performing, oh dooby wop, dib dibby doo. So already, how is this the same as the traditional Goldilocks and the Three Bears? She was singing quite well till she stumbled and fell and the microphone stand broke in two. But Goldie said, I'll try the headphones. But Mama Bear's pair was too tight. The Papas were loose. Gee, these are no use. But Baby Bears fit her just right. That tune was so catchy, thought Goldie. I'd love to be part of their band. The guitar was too twangy, the cymbals too clangy, the piano was perfectly grand. Exhausted from moving and grooving, she needed to catch a few Z's. This day's been a doozy, I'm feeling quite snoozy. She dozed off on Baby Bear's keys. In the meantime, the bears had held tryouts, but no one had blown them away. The hair was too twitchy, the pigs were too pitchy, and red was just simply okay. The family returned to their cottage, distressed from their lack of success. When they saw the inside, the mama bear cried, oh, Egats, what a terrible mess! Someone's been using my mic stand. Someone's been using mine too. Then Baby Bear spoke, oh no, my stand broke, and he started to sniffle, <laughs> boo-hoo. Then Mama Bear looked at her headphones. Oh, someone has tried my pair on. Mine too, Papa growled, the parents both scowled as Baby Bear cried, mine are gone. Then Papa said, who played my drum set? And Mama said, who plucked my strings? And, well, who's in my chair? Asked the littlest bear. She's drooling all over my things. They stared at the slumbering blonde girl and Papa asked, who could she be? He disrupted her dream. She awoke with a scream. The pitch was a perfect high C. We're going to go ahead and pause there but the rest of this book and the traditional Goldilocks read-alouds are both in the description for you to watch and enjoy. So while I was reading that book, did you notice some things that are the same and some things that are different in those two versions? Today in reading, you are going to tell me one thing that's the same and one thing that's different about this story and the traditional Goldilocks fairy tale. You can do that by either writing it down or posting a video on Class Dojo. I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. 